Hello, my name is Tracy Berry and I'm going to be your instructor. I've been in the computer industry for over 20 years now and helped many customers set up information that is web-based, various database options, and also many internet. So I have a lot of good tips, tricks, and advice to give you about SharePoint, which is the ultimate internet. Adding components. In this unit, we'll take a look at SharePoint libraries, lists, and pages, and different ways you can add custom items in case the built-in out of the box doesn't quite meet your needs. SharePoint libraries. In this topic, we'll take a look at SharePoint libraries and different ways that you can customize the libraries, as well as creation of new libraries. Document libraries. They hold files to share with others. They help you organize. They're also the default team site does include a shared document library. And users with design or full control can create more libraries, including items like versioning and history, so that you can keep track of all the items that were changed over time. As well, you could conceivably have um, up to as many libraries as necessary, each one typically having a unique topic and a unique permission level. Therefore, if I have a set of uh, users who need certain files, instead of trying to contour item level permissions, which can be very difficult to support, it's best if I create an entire library for that audience. Therefore, they're the only ones that can gain access to it, and anything I place in there, they automatically know about, and it has their permission levels in it. So, use of some of these libraries with versioning features and alerts is a great way to come up with a container that's secure and keeps all the audience up to date on what's new, the latest, and the greatest. Creating a document library. When you create a new document library, you will have the opportunities to do more options. When you choose more options, this is what we see. Now we have an opportunity to name the library. Very important. The very first name you give a new document library is forever its URL name. Now what that means is that it should avoid spaces, it should be lowercase, and it should be relevant without being too specific. Because the initial URL can never ever be changed again. So it's very important that we give this not the name of Project ABC, but if that is what I really wanted to call it, something like that would be more appropriate. Now, once we have the library established, we can go back into its properties and give it the proper name we wished it had. And that can be changed later. But initially, uh, no space or an underscore, all lowercase, uh, relevant name, yet not too specific, as it has to stand the, the, the time of the project um, or the lifespan of it. So we don't want a name that we can't change. So keep it specific, yet generic. The navigation, yes, you can say quick launch or no. This you can change at any given time later. Uh, version history, you can change your mind about this as well. And even the document template, you can change your mind about the document template. It's not quite as simple as changing the navigation and history, but it is possible to change the template later on. And the template doesn't stop anybody from uploading any sort of file that SharePoint will support. It is connected to the new button, and the new button then would create a brand new empty Word document. Purpose of that is that brand new empty Word document will be predefined that when they save it, it goes back into the appropriate library. Document library description. Now, to describe the library right here, when we add a description, if we add a description, it will show up below the breadcrumb navigation. It's helpful if we do fill this out and make it something appropriate so that our end users know that it's the replacement area, it's everything related to Project ABC, whatever the information is. So just be aware that if you use the description, the users will see it, so make sure it's something that's appropriate or leave it blank. Document template list. When you're creating a new library up front at the beginning, it will ask you what technology you want behind the new button. And at this point, you may only choose one. 
And if you have a mixed environment in the sense that some of your users have the newer 07 or 2010 Office, others might still have the 03 Office, you're best served to choose one of these. The newer technologies know what to do with it, so there's no harm there. But if I use one of the basic without uh, an interaction or a versioning number, it will assume the newest, and the newest will not work with 03, and you will receive an error. Now, this is something that later can be changed. It's not as easy as clicking a drop-down as we do here, but it is possible later on to change the document list. It's also possible as well to add multiple templates under the New button. Form Libraries. Form libraries are used to share and track XML-based forms. They have templates associated so that as we choose a template, it's not a blank empty something we're dealing with. We fill out the appropriate fields with the appropriate um, properties related to them. Useful for organizing company forms. You can enable versioning. You can also store more than one XML-based form and is not included in the default team site. It's something that you must set up above and beyond. And anyone with designer full control can build you a form library. Specifically, there's a product called InfoPath that works beautifully with the SharePoint form libraries. Picture libraries. These are used to store and share image files. The default is a thumbnail view. They are not included in the default team site. However, they can be created by users with designer full control permissions. They can even include folders for better organization. And you have the ability when you upload multiples to even uh, compress the image so that it takes up less file space versus bringing it raw from the digital camera. That might be much, much too large. If you're going to use it for a basic PowerPoint or Word type situation, it's a good idea to compress it so that we don't waste storage space if storage space is an issue. Wiki page libraries. These are going to store various web pages. They're not included by default in the team site, and they can be created by users with design or full control permissions. Now, these web pages that we create, they can house anything potentially we can add in SharePoint. Um, in, uh, embedded information, which would be stored in an asset area, or they could be an existing list or library, or some other .NET type component, or a custom web part. But the key is, they will not, by their very nature, show up in the top or left quick launch navigation. So if you create a custom wiki page and store it in this library, you need to make sure that you create a navigation structure in some capacity, whether it be a link list or customizing the home page, making sure your end users can quickly and easily find your new page that you build. Wiki library description page. Here we have the area that's telling them all about a wiki, its meaning, how it's used within a business environment, also, other ways that they can be used, brainstorming ideas, collaborating, uh, tracking call center information, etc. And it also gives you a detailed link that would give you directions as to how to edit, create new pages, putting content on it. So it does a very good job of sharing with you the information of how to utilize wiki pages if they're new to you. It's also a good opportunity because by default, every wiki library has this as the default page. Therefore, whoever builds a wiki library, they're going to have a good set of directions built in. 